my fellow Amazonians, uh, this is Dr. Cho Ayaba. This is your daily briefing from my office. All money plays day. She shake no day. My people, for seven years, you have listened to me. You have my audios, my videos. But everything I have said, my appeal in comparison to the noise that you are da daily fed with, everything I have spoken about might be forgotten in the face of the ease with which people can talk. But one thing you will not forget is what we have done. We might not have done as much as you would have wanted. And this is based on the fact that you might not have enough information to do effective compar comparative analysis to determine that the Ambazonian struggle has gone really far in comparison with other struggles. But if you want to pass judgment in this struggle, the words might not be enough. Even the actions we take against the enemy my pale in comparison to the work that we have done in institutionalizing some of the processes, some of the actions, and some of the words we utter. For seven years, we were bold, and we told you we will give you a self-defense that will undermine the ruthlessness and the almost invincibility of the Turks and the barbarians from Cameroon. The gendarmes were so notorious that their red berets alone sent chills down, down your spine. Then they brought in the bees. They popularized the bees as some US special forces that can land behind enemy lines and destroy their enemies. We struck them. We empowered you to believe you can hit them too. We make their own parents to cry. You saw it. Our forces might not have completely vanquished the enemy, but for the first time in your life since 1961, when they destroyed our own police forces, they destroyed everything we had. You saw an institution erected from nothing to become a force that on October 1, you could look at them with pride. They could export pain also to the enemy. When we complain about the system of education, there is a difference between education and the acquisition of knowledge. Knowledge is what we need to disentangle ourselves from this web that have wrapped us in. To be able to think freely, to know our past in order to shape our future. Knowledge is what we need in order to be productive. They've denied us knowledge. They have decreed schools which our parents have built. They have treated teachers like slaves. When we stood up against that system of intoxication, we did not only tell you it was bad, we proposed to you what the alternative will look like. For the first time in the history of liberation wars, the poorly funded people are able to produce one of the best curriculum of education. And against all odds, we set up community schools. When others speak, they may be louder. 
They may even make more sense. But if you want to judge us, you are going to judge us based on what we have produced. Within the Department of Education now, we have set up a sub-unit on health and agriculture that can help our people stay alive, be healthy, help our people acquire the knowledge on how to transform their produces into ready-made products that can go to the market at a more higher price. We are doing a lot. Before you saw the majesty of self-defense, we were in the tunnels building it and we presented them to you in a way that you took pride in Ambazonia. That's the same way we did with community schools. And you could see our children on October 1 singing our anthem in their uniforms. We are doing a lot and we are going to show you what we are doing. I bring these things so you don't get confused. Because for the past 61 years, you've been confused with a lot of noise. From CRTV to Cameroon Tribune and all the plethora of newspapers that have existed. That have been spewing out constructed narrative to keep you enslaved so they can succeed. You must reject those systems and embrace the power of deliverance that takes you out of that state of enslavement to the majestic heights of a free people. My dear people, we will continue to build the systems of self-governance because we know what is coming. And I'll speak about this in a few moments. It is not enough to talk about freedom. What matters is the alternative that you put in place. And as we fight on a daily basis to liberate the land, we are building that alternative system. So that once you take ownership of that land, there are institutions existing to safeguard the freedom you fought for. There's virtually no, no use to talk about the freedom of assembly when there are no supporting institutions and laws to guarantee that it is protected or to ensure that there is a remedy when it is violated. We talked about uh, the taxi colors and today I want to thank you people. I want to thank the drivers that have changed their taxi colors. I want to thank our people for the support. And I want to thank all sister forces and other forces across the Amazonian territory that have also adopted this strategy. And you will be seeing the changes in the coming weeks. I want you to embrace the victory that you've already acquired. <laughs> I know it is very, the Amazonian is absolute. They have an absolutist mentality. That is, uh, every street must be free of yellow. No, we have already won. We have told the colonial SDO that power resides with the Amazonian people. And for every adventurer, for every impostor that is going to parade our street and continue to want to rule our people with decrees without the consent of our people, we would outlaw those decrees and institute counter decrees and show them how it works. If you are still running taxis with yellow color, we hear that um, La Republic Barbarians are now running taxi. We don't have the time to stop the taxi. We'll shoot it from afar. So if you are running on our street with yellow uh, taxis, we will not risk the lives of our men to stop and check who you are, civilian or, or, or Barbarian La Republic Thug. And I encourage our people to continue to use their bikes and non-yellow uh, caps that run our street. This is our land, we will not negotiate what colors we use, what language we speak, how we function. That is the law of the land. I congratulate our forces in Gokutungia, as I said the other day. They have instituted a ban in response to, uh, a ban on, on, on motor vehicles in response to the ban imposed by the colonial SDO on, on bikes. And everybody in Gokutungia must adhere to this order and avoid um, using uh, motor vehicles at particular times. And every motor vehicle that is yellow should also change. I also want to 
I also want to thank our forces in Meme and Fako for the brilliant job that they are doing. Continue to fight. Um, we are working hard, my people. Uh, we are working extremely very hard. I can't, I can't say much. Sometimes before you see one small victory, we failed more than a hundred times. Those failures you will not know. But the role of a leader or the role of institutions is to find solutions to the problems of our liberation. And on a daily basis, we are working hard. I just finished the meeting with uh, uh, the PM of the Biafran people, Mr. Simon, quite a few moments ago, talking on how we need to work together to ensure that we undermine the ability of the enemy to use Biafran territory, you know, as a spot to attack our people. Yesterday, we were attacked. Our forces in, in, in Bamenda were attacked. Four ammo cars, they launched more than six uh, rocket launchers on our forces. Uh, but they, they confirmed code because the resistance of our forces was fierce, was fierce. It was a serious fighting and I monitored it for about three hours. It was heart wrenching. And I can confirm this morning that uh, they lost two men. We've confirmed this. The, the, the move forces from the Alabukam, the, the Alabukam Bengui axis, the move forces from different axes to attack uh, our brigade uh, in, in, in town. And we have confirmation this morning that two of their forces from the Alabukam axis died in the attack. And we'll continue to exact uh, revenge on, on, on the way they conduct themselves in our land. You saw how they killed Colonel Stone. You could see the beast in these people, the barbarians, and, and remove uh, things and, and put on him and, and, and a, another civilian and, and burnt them, burnt their dead body. This is how genocide happens. So they dehumanize you. Even when you are dead, they still have the strength to pour fuel on dead bodies. Why not? If they could do that in Gabo on children, why not on, on our forces? But as I wrote the other day, we will respond. And uh, the world that has remained silent to this must not complain. I have notified the international community of what happened with Colonel Stone. It's a violation of international humanitarian law. And we will continue to do so. Uh, what you, sh you I know you are experiencing across the territory, the lack of uh, electricity. <laughs> this, is, this is what uh, Endele warned us about. That union with Cameroon will bring hell. You know, we, we have instruments that can produce energy that can power the entire uh, Biafra, Nigerian land, and even the entire West Africa. They abandon it for uh, a day. We have a seaport that is natural that could bring in goods. You don't need to remove sand from, from, from it. They abandon it for, for, for their own seaport that is artificial. We don't have electricity. How do you run an economy without electricity? How can an economy be productive without, without energy? We are living in the 21st century where you can even transform sun, sunlight into energy, where we have enough water to produce energy, where we have even enough wind to produce energy. But the wind, it brings down homes. What, what kind of system are we tolerating? What kind of system do we get up every morning and uh, how do we think it's going to change? We have just watched in Kenya. The people have risen up. We've just listened to the vice president calling on the president to step down. I call on Ambazonian people to take a stand, not only with our forces, but against these barbarians and the institutions they've instituted in our land that has caused us a lot of misery and sadness. Roads are impassable. No lights. There is water everywhere, yet drinking water is, 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 not, is not available. This is 2024. We were better off in 1961 than we, we are today. We had airports, we had seaports, we had airstrips, we had better roads, cleaner streets. This is what uh, Endele won us against. And, and, and I call upon you to, to join our forces to take civil action against these enemies. For the past uh, seven years or so, not a stray, a stray bullet has killed a La Republic citizen in Ambazonia. You've not heard that a La Republic citizen uh, has, has been killed by a stray bullet. 
all the precious land we have, they are buying those land because we are so broke that the only thing we have is the land and we sell it to them. They are, they are, they are populating our neighborhoods, our, our, our villages, threatening our culture, threatening our language, threatening our food, threatening everything that makes us a people. And I think we must, we must be in shock and awe and, and that should compel us to, to stand up for our country. There is uncertainty in Cameroon, my people. There is uncertainty in, in, in Cameroon and it's collapsing. And I think you must be aware. Uh, I, have, I have passed instructions to our forces to prepare themselves because you'll get up one morning, all their barracks are empty. They've all escaped because the center does no longer hold. Cameroon is held together by the center south and east that is still backing the, the regime that has basically collapsed. The, the north, the far north, and the Adamawa, they don't have this kind of CPDM foundational relationship that is attached to Mr. Bia. You have the UNDP and the ADP or some of these other political parties. And the North is still angry about what Bia did to them. And so expect that with the demise of Mr. Bia, the North might break away. Or there might be a civil war from there. I don't think you believe that the Bameli case that suffered genocide from Cameroon will be standing with the center, south and east. I don't think their littoral region will be standing with them. This is what we must analyze we must factor these realities into the way we design our own consolidation strategies. Cameroon is on the brink of something that Africa has never seen. And I think Ambazonia must be prepared. Anybody still fantasizing on the notion of Cameroon is a daydreamer. Or you are engaged in self-deceit to keep yourself on a daily basis. If you are a futuristic person, if you think beyond your own self, if you look at things from a bigger perspective, you will know doomsday is coming. The way the country is structured makes it incapable of the pillars of the state to support it in the event of a collapse of a system that has killed so many, has deprived so many of opportunities. And we must also be prepared. It is in collapse that full-blown genocide takes effect. So what do you think La Republic forces will be doing in their wake? That the system collapses and they are, they are retreating. You think they'll be hugging you and kissing you? No, they'll be burning everything, killing everybody along the way. So I've instructed our forces to organize communities, to educate communities, to begin to develop civil administrative structures to make sure that in the event of a collapse or a retreat of this enemy, you know, there is some organization will eliminate criminality and there is some sense of, uh, of order in our society. So we are working on all of these contingencies. Yet we must continue to make sure that our forces are well resourced. We invest in our forces. We invest in the projects, in the what they call sovereignty projects like education, agriculture, health. These are the foundation of every state. So I'm, I'm, I'm very happy. We have produced something unique. It is called the Manifesto of our Independent Amazonia. It is, it, is, it is very unique. I would like to read, end this by reading a section of it. It's, it's fantastic. We, we have cataloged the injustices, whether it's economic, political, or the violence. We have documented them. And it is written in the manifesto as, as a charge. And so there is this section which, after all of those documentation, we wrote for same and similar reasons, and sometimes for less, have men and women, the peoples of the world, down the ages, are risen, fought against such tyranny and usurpations, and established for themselves a sovereign country of their own. To this end, have they received the support and favor of other peoples and countries. In these existential realities to which Ambazonia has been subjugated, La Republic du Cameroon has shown itself to seek the death and annihilation of the Ambazonian people, 
to consistently deprive Ambazonians of all liberties and deny health, education, life, prosperity, peace and happiness to the Ambazonian nation. If these acts were rare or discontinuous, one would excuse them as the occasional limitations of any government. Nay, they are systematic and have been continuous for more than 63 years. La Republique du Cameroon has persistently carried them out with impunity with the intention of maintaining its domination of the Amazonian people and the occupation of their land for purposes of the exploitation of our resources. If you doubted the reason for which they act with impunity, know it. And if you ever wonder why we are fighting, know that we fight because of these impunity, but much so for the things I outlined, better education, access to free medical and health care, a government founded on the consent of the people, rules and regulations that are developed through representation are interpreted following standard practices. And I am definitely very sure Endele wasn't wrong. And I am sure we weren't wrong in establishing these institutions to safeguard Ambazonia. God bless you people and, uh, and I salute the courage of our forces.